Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. Coming to the ring, the Dragon and Destroyer, Kevin Mighty. He looks relaxed, he looks focused. Only business when he spoke to Jim Rosenthal after the weigh-in. This is what I do, it's just a fight. Maybe, but it's the biggest, arguably, of his whole career. So much was expected of Kevin Mitchell when he turned professional. It's taken a long time. Now at 27, he gets his chance. His preparations, I'm told, have been spot on. They'll need to be. And now the defending world. Champion, the Ripster, Michael Buffer told me he had something special and he intended it to uh, give it both barrels. He said that this was a kind of a throwback occasion. No big screens over the ring. He said this must have been how it was back in the 1950s. Well, you can certainly go back to Ken Buchanan, to Jim Watts. This is a Scottish hero, Ricky Burns, and he is getting a phenomenal reception, Paul. It, it's electric. It's absolutely electric. I'm sitting here with one headphone off me ears so I can actually soak it up myself. And it's some atmosphere, it's the know to get behind it all and the right behind Ricky Benz. The sixth defence of the title. The WBO lightweight crown. Parallels have been drawn between Ricky Burns and Steve Robinson and what he did down in Wales, and I can kind of see that, but I don't think Steve ever produced this sort of atmosphere, and as you look across the SETC here tonight, this, Paul, is big licks, and here's Ricky Burns now. This is what we're here for, this is the big fight, this is the atmosphere everyone's tuning in to see, and they just want to see a wall and a tear up, and these two are right bang up for it. This could be very special. Ricky Burns, the 29-year-old Scotsman, against Kevin Mitchell, the man from Dagenham, 27 years old. Terry O'Connor there is the guy who's going to be officiating. And it almost doesn't need a big build-up, but you can absolutely guarantee you're going to get it now because we'll be hearing once more in a moment or two from the inimitable Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to SECC Arena, Glasgow, Scotland. Tonight, Hall of Fame promoter Mr. Frank Warren is proud to present the main event of the evening. If you love boxing, you're gonna love this. 12 three-minute rounds for the WBO lightweight Championship of the World! Sponsored by the Scottish Sun and Raymond Steele. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Chairman, Mr. Charles Giles. Steward in charge, Mr. Bernard Conley. 
WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, Supervisor for the WBO Dennis Kilmartin. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout, Phil Edwards, Richie Davis, and Terry, pardon me, and Dave Paris. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Terry O'Connor. And now, 700 years ago, William Braveheart Wallace was the hero at Sterling Bridge. 300 years ago, Rock Roy McGregor was the hero at Glen Shield. And 40 years ago here in Glasgow, two great warriors, two of the greatest lightweight champions of all time, Ken Buchanan and gentleman Jim Watt, fought their hearts out. Now, history repeats itself as the legacy of battle in Scotland continues. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, official weight, 135 pounds. An outstanding professional record consisting of 34 fights, 33 victories, including 24 knockouts, with 17 KOs coming in four rounds or less, and only one defeat. He's the former British champion and former WBO, inter intercontinental super featherweight and lightweight champion, the WBO number one ranked challenger in the world, the Dragon and Destroyer, Kevin Mighty Mitchell. Inviting out of the blue corner, wearing white with black, officially weighing also 135 pounds. His professional record. Also outstanding, 35 fights, 33 victories, including nine knockouts, with only two defeats. He's a two-time world champion, presenting the fighting pride of Glasgow, Scotland, the reigning, defending WBO lightweight champion of the world, the Richter, So all the talking is over. Now we find out who really is the better man. We've all heard the stories about how Burns supposedly got the better of Mitchell in sparring those years ago. Now it's for real. And up there, who wouldn't be nervous in sort of this in front of this sort of atmosphere? Ricky Burns, I thought of the two, maybe looked the more nervous. Yeah, I agree, John. I the first thing I notice about Ricky, A, he's in very good shape, but B, looks nervous. Well, kind of the perceived wisdom is that this was going to be boxer, slickster against puncher. But Kevin Mitchell is more than that. Against Breedis Prescott, as Steve Bunce was telling you, he showed that he can box for 12 rounds at range, box to a plan, get in and out, score as it needs, We'll see if he can deliver that sort of style tonight. Maybe those who suggest that he's just going to go in there as the banger and not seeing the whole picture, I wonder. No. Kevin Mitchell showed that night against Peter Prescott how, how well he can box on the back foot and how much of a boxing brain he's got. For me, Kevin's always comfortable when shots are coming at him. Ricky Baines is, is a very, very good technical boxer. He keeps it upright, he's very good jab, good hand speed as well. That's what makes the fight, that's the beauty of this fight. Hard to get to Burns as well. In whispers that uh, his sparring has gone well with Bradley Saunders. Whispers as well, though, 
that there are shots which he can be vulnerable to, and I'm sure that Jimmy Tibbs and Mark Tibbs, who've worked long and hard with Kevin Mitchell, they'll have heard those whispers. They'll have worked out a plan, absolutely sure of it. And Mitchell's starting well, that's a nice body shot. Could be a really tight fight, this one. But I think it's going to be hard to score for me and you, John. I think it's going to be really difficult to separate them for the bulk of the fight. That's your job. <laughs> They're both saying themselves, every time they've been asked, 12-round war, 12-round war, both of them. Well, you heard Angus Lockwood earlier on talking about the betting patterns for this fight. Ricky Burns is the gambling favourite, and the bet, I think, where the money's gone is Burns on points, which is round about five to four on, best price, perhaps just approaching even money. That seems to be where the money has gone, although there are plenty who think Mitchell can get a stoppage. Yeah, Mitchell's jab is lovely in this round. He's, he's coming out the better in the exchange with the jab, and that was a good right hand that comes straight off it as well. You'd expect Baines to be beating the battle, winning the battle of the jabs. Oh, look at this, going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the opening round. Two of them landing heavy shots. Burns came back with a really good right hand of his own, having been tagged pretty solidly by Mitchell. A red-blooded start to this fight. Been one of the most talked-about fights for a long time. And Burns... Looking to get Mitchell's respect in this opening round, he's trying to hit, show his strength, his power. Whether it's a smart tactic remains to be seen. Mitchell waves to his fans, Burns back to his corner. Difficult one to score, get off the fence ball. <laughs> so hard to split them, but for me, the, the, the battle of the jabs won it for me. I hope this is it. Yeah, this is the same one, you know, Burns lands light with a jab, Mitchell lands with one, and then Mitchell comes back with a nice right hand after it. It's the only really main talent shot in the round for me, so that added to the jabs and the clever boxing of, of Kevin Mitchell. I'm going to give it to Mitchell, and if I can't give a split. If that's a taste of what we can expect for the next 12 rounds, it could turn out to be very, very tasty indeed. Busy on the jab, OK? If he moves into your right hand, right hand, left hook, right hand, OK? That's very good, it's a good start, OK? Billy Nelson, trainer of Ricky Burns. He's happy with the start. And the crowd right behind Ricky Burns. Kevin Mitchell's got his supporters here as well. But this is reminiscent, as Michael Buffer told you, of those glory nights of Jim Watt at the Calvin Hall. Yeah. There's not in that either corner could be unhappy with in that round. They've both done the right thing. They're both boxing well, and it was a tough round to split them. Sharp right hand from Mitchell. Burns counted well. That's a nice right hand from Mitchell, uh, from Burns rather. Burns in the black and white shorts. Everybody talks of Burns as fitness. Gone 12 rounds on seven occasions. Mitchell's had times when his life seemed to be spiralling out of control. Uh, speaking to Mark Tibbs yesterday, works of course with his dad Jimmy, and he says that he is in terrific shape. And that's a good attack from Burns. Good stuff from Burns. You're having the last say in the exchange as well. Pushing Mitchell back with some good shots. Very, very different sort of set of problems Mitchell's having to confront from those presented by John Murray in that much talked about fight which was certainly one of the fights of the year last year Burns physically strong and trying to make that count going to work on Mitchell on that far side of the ring Mitchell fans Responding to that left hand from Mitchell, but it was partially blocked by Burns, who looks physically so strong. Yeah, he looks in great shape. I've said all week, people are asking me opinion on the fight, and I've said it all depends on if Kevin is in shape. Kevin Mitchell is in great shape tonight. He looks he looks a million dollars. Same with Ricky Baines, though, you know, taking nothing away from Ricky Baines, he's in fantastic shape. People poo-pooed Billy Nelson 
year or two ago when he said that Ricky Burns could one day be ranked alongside the Scottish greats. If he comes through this emphatically... Oh, great, great right shot right from Burns, really good right hand. Absolutely stopped Mitchell in his tracks. Lovely right hand from Burns, nice sharp right hand, right down the pipe. Well, that's got Mitchell up onto his bike now. He's certainly got new respect for Ricky Burns now. The right hand of Ricky Burns has been the danger shot, and that was the best punch of the fight so far. The crowd shouting and chanting the two touch gloves. Good round for Burns. Yeah, Burns round. Thankfully, a little bit easier for us to score from a selfish point of view. It was a good round. Good clean right hand from Rick. There it is again on the chin. I think Mitchell was laying back as it landed, probably made it look a little bit worse, but it was a lovely shot right on the button. Well, he took it well. Yeah, that's the sharpness Baines has got with the long, long range counter as well. Kevin Mitchell will probably think he's a bit safe out of there. Can you see it? Hey, good. Let's do it, son. Don't want my shorts on the same. Okay, okay. Well, if he was nervous yeah, beforehand, he's settled down round. now. OK, I want a busy round now. OK, don't give us any confidence well, in the centre line. Oh, oh, OK. They like that, they like that second round as well, they might. Good round for Burns, and if Mitchell did perhaps edge the opener, that has certainly squared it right up. You can hear the game plan from Burns and uh, uh, Billy... Billy Nelson talking in the corner there, you know, my shots are already landed in the second round. I think they were expecting to get this late, maybe take the sting out of Kevin Mitchell and then land his shot late. Burns. And the two of them standing and trading. Burns and Mitchell calling. wanting to show that he's the yeah. macho man. Burns calling Mitchell on and Mitchell happily obliging, you know, launching forward with a nice big left two. Burns standing his ground and holding his own. Threw it up nicely, John. Ricky Burns, for a lightweight, just looks such a big guy. Massive, absolutely massive. That's the right hand again. They have worked on that. They've got to have thought that is a weakness of Kevin Mitchell because the right hand has been a telling shot for Ricky Burns in this fight. Both of these fighters are, seem to be open and a bit susceptible to the other fighter's big punch. Ricky Burns has been getting caught with nice left hooks from Kevin Mitchell, and Kevin Mitchell's took about four big stiff right hands now from Ricky Burns. And of course, the work of Burns emphasised by the crowd's reaction. Yeah, Mitchell grunting with the effort as he delivered that punch. That's a good right hand. Solid shot from Burns. Mitchell really has to cover up. Come on, bring it on, he says. This is what we want to see, isn't it, John? This is what we're here for. Mitchell off the ropes after taking a right hand to the temple. Draws Ricky Baines on and asks him for more. Burns will want to stay cute, though. It's not in his interest to go into a toe-to-toe -to -toe war. No, and Ricky Baines is doing the right thing. Kevin Mitchell's got to be careful that he doesn't just keep going for that one single left hook on its own because he'll become predictable. Baines will cover up with the right hand and come back with a counter. Right hand again, this time only a glancing blow. That's better. Again, no, John, the same could be said for Ricky Baines. He, he's got to not go right hand happy because Kevin will just took up with the left hand and come back with his own left hook as well as a counter. They've both got to be careful that they don't get one trick pony and keep trying the best shot. We'll have another look at that at the end of the round. What you're talking about there, Paul, and also hopefully hear from the the Tibbs father and son combination in Kevin Mitchell's corner, because this is looking as though it's shaping up to be another Ricky Burns round. Yeah. Dominated this one, forcing the pace, forcing the tactics. Mitchell has not landed much clean in this third round. Well, good fight, Paul. And here's some of the action that you see there on the front foot, Burns 
chopping right hand, and again. Yeah, just uh, just falling a little bit short there, and Kevin was doing well to get out the way of that, so it didn't have a full effect, but this is the exchange on the ropes, four, five, six unanswered shots, and then just, you know, give me some more, come off the ropes, this is what we want to see, but it's OK doing that, Mitch has got to really show it. So he's finding Desperado, big ones, yeah. out of desperation, then having a little walk away. The left foot, you're wasting, wasting it, Kev. You're, you're wasting that left foot where he's blocking it. You've got to get that left, that left uppercut yeah. through the middle. Yeah. Or the right hand, one out of two. Yeah. Jab, jab, left uppercut, get close to it. Yeah. Slip over it, slip under. Yeah. Yeah. Slip under. Yeah. Kind of underlines what you're saying, Paul. Yeah, just don't make it too obvious. He's got a massive left hook. It will land, but just disguise it. And I, I, if I was Kevin Mitchell, like Jimmy Tidd just said, I'd have a go. I'd concentrate on the left hook or the right hand for this round and keep the left hook away just to let him, Ricky Baines, get nulled into a false sense of security. Save with Ricky Baines. I wouldn't go for the right hand as much as he's been doing it this round. Burns was standing in the middle of the ring. Mitchell a little bit slow off his stool and Burns was smiling at him. Mitchell needs to box his way back into this. The Tarzan chest beating might enthuse the crowd, doesn't win him rounds. Mitchell going to work again this time. Oh, sorry, Burns going to work again. This time, Mitchell a bit cuter in the way he was, he was slipping the punches. For Kevin Mitchell, he's got to get back to doing what he was doing in the first round. The cutter takes on his boxing and his jab. That was nice. A nice. T he, he fainted the left hook and turned it into a nice uppercut and it caught Ricky Burns. That's what he needs to do. Burns needs to stop just going for the right hand only and, and doing, you know, he's got, he's got to not make it obvious. Well, it was what Jimmy Tibbs was saying. Let's see you work off the jab and bring the uppercut into play. And he did it nicely, but now the strength of Burns again tallying as Mitchell's forced back into his own corner. Heads getting in there, referee Terry O'Connor having a close look, shouting his instructions to the fighters. She went Burns through that last right hand. Kevin just raised his left elbow slightly and caught it easily. He blocked it easily because it's becoming a bit predictable from Ricky Burns. He needs to mix it up a little bit more with his variety, which he's got some good variety of punches. The Scottish Exhibition Centre reverberating to the chants nice of the right Burns hand. fans, and that was a really quality right hand. And again. Kevin Mitchell at the moment is being outboxed. Oh, great oh. shot! What a tremendous left hook! A great shot! And Ricky Burns has put Mitchell down in this fourth round. And the referee's having a close look at him, asking him to walk forward. The action continues, and Burns lands another tremendous right hand. He's gone again, and it's going to be all over this fight. Twice down. The referee this time will want to look so very, very closely into the eyes of Kevin Mitchell. It goes on again. Two knockdowns, still 20 seconds remaining. Big left hand. He could go again and again. Huge punches coming in from Burns, but Mitchell might see it. Ten Who's seconds the end to go, John. Ten seconds to go. Mitchell needs to hold him. And it's all over. It is all over. In the fourth round, Terry O'Connor rescues Kevin Mitchell. Then in the fourth round, the man who supposedly was not a puncher has produced the win of his career and has stopped Kevin Mitchell. A tremendous performance for the Scotsman, and now Glasgow celebrates. Great finish, lovely finish from Ricky Baines. As you say, John, he's not a noted puncher. He caught Kevin Mitchell clean on the chin with that shot, and it just disorientated everything that he had. Great finish. He didn't let him off the hook. There was 20 seconds to go in the round, and he still put it on him, still took it to him, and got the stoppage win. Well deserved. Well, they will praise him to the heavens, I'm sure. That was a performance which reverberates down the ages. That was superb. Everyone said, if Baines wins, it's a points win. I said before on in an interview, I fancied Kevin Mitchell if he was in shape, but I wouldn't be surprised by any result tonight if it was a draw, if it was a Baines stoppage, a Baines points win, a Rick, uh, Kevin Mitchell points or a Kevin Mitchell stoppage. 
I wouldn't be surprised with anyone, and I'm not too surprised by that. That was a great finish and a lovely, fast, sharp shot, which called Kevin Mitchell and Ricky Baines never let him off the hook. Well, we can watch again how it unfolded. That was one terrific shot. Peach, lovely shot. Kevin was eight off it. You know, he got up and his leg seemed OK until Terry O'Connor on eight when he says box he pushes him and you watch kevin just sag a little bit and that's yep. when i knew he wasn't okay but his legs seemed solid at first he landed some huge shots right hands this time did the business yeah the fact that he got up straight away there showed he was eight even more as well not not in experience but he knew what he was doing on the first one to stay and take the eight the second one he got up fast might have been stopped there i reckon but now well, Mitchell was pretty well nigh defenceless. That left hand told it. And Terry O'Connor watching closely, watching, watching. And now he's thinking it's going to be all over because nothing's coming back. Big right hand almost stopped it. Yeah. Now he does. And the bell almost stopped it as well. There was only like two seconds to go in the round. But which, you, which shows again another class finish from Ricky Baines because to, let, to, to get Kevin Mitchell out of there, three, no, three basic three knockdowns, two knockdowns, and then the final burst at the end, Teddy O'Connor had seen enough and stopped the fight, and thankfully there's no arm to either fighter. Well, Kevin Mitchell prepared long and hard. He said he was in the shape of his life, but in the event, Ricky Burns was just superb. And now Michael Buffer will bring the result and listen to the noise for this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, referee Terry O'Connor steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The official time, two minutes, 59 seconds of round number four. The winner by TKO victory and still, WBO lightweight champion of the world, the fighting pride of Glasgow, Scotland, Baxter, Ricky. Scotland has produced some wonderful champions over the years. Ken Buchanan, Jim Watt, Scott Harrison, Ricky Burns, for me, on the basis of that performance, Paul, can be ranked right alongside them. He is in the elite. Two-time, two-weight world champion, and, and deservedly so. He's not there with Mickey Mouse titles, he's got a WBO belt, he's won a WBO belt twice at two weights, beating good kids to do so and defending it against even better kids. Class performance, you know, faultless, you, you can't criticise anything that he did. It, the way he was talking in his corner at the end of the round, he was in for the long haul, he was warming up nicely, and he was saying in the corner, his shots are getting off already in the second round, he maybe wasn't expecting them. He warmed into the fight nicely and took over and finished it great, world class. He was terrific tonight, and on that sort of basis, you saw that pound for pound sort of rankings of the lightweight division before the fight began, on that showing, Ricky Burns may well be top of the pile. Terrific. And Michael Buffer saying, very well done indeed, Ricky Burns. What a great performance from him. He'll be working in his sports shop uh, tomorrow week. He's going to take a, his new wife on holiday to uh, Las Vegas. He's going to have a little go at training in Floyd Mayweather's gym over there. Don't rule out a Vegas appointment for Ricky Burns before he leaves the boxing ring. An absolutely excellent performance by Ricky Burns, and I have to say, guys, no one saw that one coming. You know what? No one saw that one coming. We knew there was always a risk that, that, that Kevin might get in there and get too involved. We saw that with his beat in his chest in the third round. But even if we got too involved, we still didn't see, we still couldn't imagine a fourth round stoppage like that under any circumstances. Just stop you for a moment there. We'll, get, we'll bring you in a moment. Let's put, pop down to ringside for some post-fight reaction. Yes, well, we were friends before, and they're very much arm in arm uh, again. Ricky Burns, champion. Where did that come from? I just said to Kevin there, and the, the whole camp um, for it, and the build up to this fight went perfect. <laughs> um, I say all my sparring, but during sparring, I was just, I've been feeling just so much more physically stronger, um, and my confidence has got there as well. And I th hopefully I'll go back and watch it back. 
Um, but I did. I felt so much, so much stronger in the other night. You looked quite nervy in the in, in the build-up and in the first round. Did you take it uh, three or four minutes to get your feet? No, you know, I said to Barry before we were into the fight, um, I'll go out and I'll try and suss him out the first round, see what's happening. Um, we'll try and obviously open up with the combinations, pushing forward, keep the pressure on. Um, and when I got the chance, when I had Kevin on the ropes, try and rough him up because I said I did feel so much physically stronger in the build-up to this, um, and it worked. Kevin, in the build-up, you were telling me that people talk about Ricky Burns not being able to punch, and you were yeah. always respectful of that. Yeah, I always said, you know, there's kids, and we're two-time, two-weight world champion, you can't punch. You know, defend the top a few times there. Obviously, you can punch. As you just see, then you can punch, could be a good shot. I've never been stopped like before. I've never been on the floor, and he's done the job on me tonight. Very fit, very strong. Much further, much stronger than I thought I was expected. Be fair, he's, he's in good stead, man, I promise you. Right. And let's bring Billy Nelson in as well. You've long been championing him, not... not just in, in Scotland and Britain, but in the world. In your eyes, where's he at? I just, uh, Ricky's improving all the time, and we knew this was going to be a very hard fight. I mean, M Jimmy and Mark have got uh, Kevin in fantastic condition, so we knew we were going to have a real hard fight, and it, uh, and it was the case. But, you know, he, he can do what he wants to do. He, he's, he's got the ability, as, you know, just as Kevin has. Kevin's a class fighter, you know, and he'll come back, he'll come back a better fighter. Um, you were in great shape. You've talked about Ring Magazine, maybe unifying titles. What, what are your ambitions? Um, I think, obviously, I've got, on Monday, um, I'll be on the phone to Frank Warren uh, and Alec Morrison, my management and promotions. Hopefully, obviously, we can push for a unification fight. Um, I know the Ring Magazine, they know that that's the belt I've always wanted to fight for. Um, hopefully, they can get me in that position to go out and try and unify. It's been a dream come true. Frank Warren is just to the side, so we can sort of bring Frank. First of all, a word on that performance, because that was sensational. It was. It was, a, you know, really <clears throat> hotting up to look a bit really good, uh, good fight. And it was a good fight, and then, uh, you know, he showed he showed what I've been saying for a long time. He's the most improved fighter in this country. You know, Kevin trained really hard for this. A lot of people fancied him to win the fight. Um, you know, and it's, you know, the two great, great fellas. You couldn't work with two better fellas. Um, but you know, on the night. He's done the business, Ricky, and you can't take that away from him. You know, he's, he's, he, is, he's, he is a good fighter, and, he's, and I believe he's going to go from strength to strength. And for Kevin, he mustn't get disheartened by this. He's got to get himself back in the gym, you know, and, and focus, and uh, he can come again. But I'll tell you what, this guy here is going to unify titles. He's a two-time world champion now, and he will unify titles. And fight again in December. We're going to get him out. He's going to get another fight in this year. And that's the way he'll cement his legacy, by being busy, active, and the big fights will come. This was a big fight. You know, plenty of people here sold out. That's big fights. You know, there aren't many, many guys at his weight around in the world, the other world champions who, who bring crowds out like this. So he should be proud of what he's done tonight for Scotland. It was a fabulous performance. And you lads said in the build-up, you'll sit down and have a beer. What's the chat going to be later on? Chat is with pub fight talk. No, <laughs> he's done the job. You know, he, he was awesome tonight. He was in great shape. He, he, to be fair, he's come on better every time. You know, and he pulled out again tonight. And I, I was expecting hard night's work as I thought. I didn't think he'd be out, he'd, he'd cover the ground so quick, so early. But I she did, did do. I, I did say you'd bring out the best in me. Yeah, no, you did say, it and he did. He pulled out every time he gets in a better position. He pulls out the bag. So good luck to him. So that atmosphere was something special. A word on that. Um, again, I'm. Um, the, the support I get, especially in, in Glasgow and where I'm from, it's unbelievable. Just like to say a big thank you to everybody who came down here and who's watching at home in Box Nation. Um, I just go out there, obviously, just to do my job and make everybody proud, and I hope I've done that. You were brilliant tonight, absolutely brilliant. You put on a great show, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.